everybody and welcome back to the San Jose Sharks GM mode here on HLM 22 and today we're going to get into some simulating maybe get a month or so done we're going to most likely make a trade on the blue line and you know whatever else comes after that probably look at some prospects do some uh updates on some of our prospects that we drafted last year and also guys like maybe Thomas Bortolo and guys like that in the AHL so without further ado let's hop in to today's episode. So we're going to actually make a move here to sign 48-year-old AHL head coach Mike O'Callaghan. Uh, just a good, well-rounded coach. He has B defense, B-plus goalie, and a C-plus development skill, so I do like that. We're going to bring him in for two years, give him a decent offer, so we do have a new AHL head coach. And now, let's get into some simulation. Here on opening day against the Dallas Stars, and well, already it's not going too great. Sagan and Robertson, Mario Ferraro chips one in for for us going into the second we're down by one two one game here san jose power play goes nowhere all right jamie ben gets one on the power play for the stars it's a two goal lead will the boys be able to crawl back into this one another power play jake debrusque gets one and yeah that's gonna be the game so tough loss there in game number one of the season but what can you do? Now back into regular simulation, we got a game up against the Panthers and also a game up against the Red Wings right here back to back. We get a win against the Panthers and we get a loss against the Red Wings. Michael Matheson off to a hot start, four assists in three games for him. Next, we got Seattle, 2-1-0 to start their season. 6-4 win over them. And Mirko Mueller is going to miss 10 days. I will fix this injury. All right, Mirko Mueller has been taken care of. We got a game against the Stars, currently 2-2, two and, two, and then a game against the 3-1 and one Oilers. So let's see if we can take one win here. That would be uh okay and we actually get two wins four to three against the stars six three over the oilers and eric carlson holy moly kevin lebanc as well i mean eric carlson has been great for us in the simulation 55 points last year with 15 goals and so far this year nine points in six games he has really had a resurgence uh resurgence to his career which i'm super happy about rocco grimaldi i am going to dismiss that i don't feel like we need rocco grimaldi uh the four three and oh blackhawks are next on the schedule now going for our fourth win in a row can we get it no a 5-4 loss Joachim nygaard i'm going to reject him as well carlson with another point yeah team's just looking really good offensively but the goaltending is not doing the greatest is what I've noticed. 5-2-0 Winnipeg Jets. Can we get a win against them? Yes, 4-3. And Mark Edward Vlasic is going to suffer a facial fracture. He'll miss 19 days. Let me get someone else slotted into the lineup here. Also during those uh, couple days, Mueller returned back into the lineup coming into this game against the Blues, who are currently sitting at a record of 5-3-0. Same with us. Uh, Alex True, this is an interesting um, waiver claim, so I'm actually going to take a look at this guy and uh, see what I think of Alex True. So after evaluating it, we just don't really have a, uh, the room for a guy like Alex True. He was a former San Jose Shark, but just don't got the room to bring him back. Let's see how the St. Louis game goes. Antoine Roussel, no thank you, Arizona. And an OTL 3-2 against the Blues. That is unfortunate. Now we are up to the 1st of November. Brett Kulak going on a waiver. So let's take a quick look at the stats here and then we'll hop right back into the simulation. So currently sitting one, uh, one point out of a playoff spot. We also have two games in hand though on both wildcard teams. In our division, we are also sitting one point out of a playoff spot with no games in hand. So, so far we're looking pretty decent. I know we're only nine games in, but I'm still happy where we're sitting in the standings. And in terms of player stats, here you are, Evander Kane having a great year, Tomas Hurdle picking up right right where he left off, Kevin LeBanc having a great season, Carlson again, Matheson surprisingly put up, uh, putting up great offensive numbers, Loki Couture has been really disappointing for me so far, only three points in nine games, he'll have to pick it up. Eklund with three points, Brent Burns with only two goals, really that bottom six not chipping in a whole lot, which you know, is an issue. I'd like there to be a little bit more of a spread offense. In terms of goalies, let's take a look. Aiden Hill and Alexi Melnichuk. Melnichuk actually has four wins on the year with a 906 save percentage. Aiden Hill has taken a huge step back, only one win in five games played. 
So uh, again, if we're gonna be a playoff team, Aiden Hill really has to step up, at the, uh, step up as the starter. But overall, sitting in a pretty decent place uh, over the first month. So let's hop back into the simulation. I'm, and I'm sorry if you can hear the cars outside. It's really rainy out uh, tonight, and you know just uh cars are going by busy street but yeah we got two pretty subpar teams let's see if we can get a couple wins here a loss to the canes a win against the flyers there and ooh, liber hayek former tampa bay lightning draft pick let me take a look at him so i have decided to put a claim on a uh, rangers defenseman liber hayek a former tampa bay lightning second round pick no it is not biased that i'm claiming him 24 years old, medium top six potential. I feel like Hayek might become a good kind of two-way sixth defenseman for us. Last year played decent in Hartford. He's putting up really good stats this year. And he grew four overall points in the offseason. So just a guy that I would like to play on the bench um, instead of Radom Simek. So if we actually do get the claim, then I will be trading Simek away. But we will have to wait and see. All right, now back on with simulation. We got a subpar New Jersey team. We got a 500 Minnesota team. Will we get Hayek as well? That is the big question going into these next couple days. Uh, Vladislav Kamenev, no thank you. And no liver Hayek claimed by the Blues. That really sucks, but it is what it is. He was definitely a guy who was going to go claimed. We do get one win out of those two games, an OTW against the Wild. And yeah, Carlson, Hurdle, LeBanc, Kane's fallen off a little bit, Matheson still producing, I mean, man oh man, the goalies are still not doing great for us though, which really does need to change, the offense is carrying us so hard right now, and we are still sitting at fourth, 5-6-2, Ducks team, we gotta take a win here, yes, that is big, 5-3, to three. excellent, and yeah, we're just still going here, 7-7-1 seven, seven, Wild, 11-3-1 Kings, I would love to get a win, here win against that Kings team would be huge but let's take a look and oh we oh wow we get accepted a huge trade here I did put Evander Kane on the trade block and this is a huge offer I am definitely going to take a look at this one so I did reject that Evander Kane trade I just feel like I would want a better prospect in there instead of Cal foot but anyways, let's hop back into the simulation with these two games, Minnesota and LA. Let's see if we can get some good goaltending play here. I'm going to reject that waiver claim. Big win against the Wild. What about the Kings? No Aaron Dell. Let's see. And yes, we get some great goaltending play. 3-1, 2-0. Excellent hockey played by the Netminders. We move up into third in our Pacific Division which is honestly excellent. That's huge, going on a four-game win streak right now. And we got a pretty uh, subpar Ottawa team here as well. And yeah, another 4-3 overtime win. And uh, okay, Artemi Nyazev is going to miss 21 days, moderate injury. But Mark Edward Vlasic is healthy, so let me go replace these players, and I'll be right back. All right, players replaced. Let's get back on the road. We got a pretty good Rangers team here to face up against, but another huge win, 2-1 overtime. The boys are stepping up huge right now on a six-game win streak. Going to Calgary, a big game here against a team in our own division, over 500. And wow, we get blown out hard for nothing. Win streak comes to an end. It was going to happen sometime. Let's just hop back in, get some positive simulation. Like, look at this, 10-10-0 Coyotes, 6-13-1 stars. We ought to take both of these games, honestly. Big loss against the Coyotes. Win against the Stars, though. We, too, take one of those games, which I will accept. Uh, Carlson, I mean, Carlson just going off. Evander Kane is really slowing down, though. Matheson still doing great. And yeah, now I think the final two games of the episode, we got a great Lightning team, we got a good Oilers team. Let's see if we can take one of these games. I would be happy with that. Maybe three points would be excellent. And Vitaly Abramov, I'm just going to dismiss that. I don't think we really need any more forwards on this team. Big loss against the Lightning. That's not what you want to see. De Giuseppe, I'm going to reject. And ooh, an even bigger loss against the Oilers. Holy moly. Heading over to the first, and that is where we're going to stop the simulation for today. But there are still a few things I want to do, so let's just hop right into those things.
So first, just checking in on the playoff race through the first, you know, 25 games or so, we are holding a second wildcard spot tied with the Golden Knights, but we do have one more win. Coyotes are also one point behind with a game back, and the Jets are three points behind with uh, the same amount of games. It's going to be a pretty tight race in the Pacific Division, I think, at least for the top two spots. LA might start to run away with that first spot a little bit, but overall... Um, I'm pretty happy with where we're sitting right now considering we were projected as the 29th best team uh, heading into the year, which I knew wasn't true, but I'm still happy with where we're sitting in terms of the standings. And in terms of the player stats, we are doing pretty good on that front as well. Eric Carlson having such a great resurgence here. Tomas Hurdle not producing as well as last year, but still 22 points in 23 games is excellent. LeBanc putting up great numbers, Kane playing well. I just feel like a lot of the guys have kind of took a step back offensively. Offensively, We're not getting a lot of great um, you know, numbers from the bottom six guys, and especially Logan Couture, who only has 10 points in 23 games. Uh, DeBrusque, though, with eight goals and 16 points in 23 games. Brent Burns still productive. Timo Meyer taking a bit of a step back. Yeah, um, Eklund with nine points. I mean, it's decent. We still got guys producing. It's just I would like to see a little bit more out of that top six and honestly that top nine overall. And in terms of net minders, goalies have been a bit better. Aiden Hill has gotten a little bit better. Malnichuk a little bit worse. But uh, overall, I think that the goalies are going to be a bit of a struggle for the rest of the season. But only time will tell. Maybe they do get better and maybe... You know, that is a game changer for us in terms of making the playoffs or not. But right now, I'm again just okay with where the team st uh, sits statistically. A little bit of complaints, but really nothing that is too out of the ordinary right now. So let's check in on some of our prospects, starting with our newest addition, Connor Geeky, our biggest first round pick, 14th overall, and he again is just tearing up the WHL at a 77 overall. 19 games played, 15 goals, 44 assists, or 44 points, sorry, having a much better year than last year offensively. I mean, he's just putting in so much work. For the Winnipeg Ice and this is just a, such a great player and I cannot wait to see where Connor Geeky goes for this team and man I'm just so so happy to have this guy on our squad. The next guy I would like to look at is someone we acquired at last year's deadline if you remember in the Brinton Pasnachuk trade that is Nicholas Bodine top six potential guy 76 overall he only grew one point from last year to this year, but overall in the AHL, 24 games played, 11 points, and a plus 12, putting up good defensive numbers overall, and uh, this is a guy who I kind of hope can turn into a decent two-way fifth defenseman for us, maybe a fourth defenseman if you're lucky, but just a guy who I think can be a really solid role player at the back end of the blue line, and he's showing that he's making good pro uh, progression in the AHL, so I really do hope it continues for Bodine. Let's also take a look at 18-year-old Philip Bice one of our picks last year, I believe our second round pick, power forward, 69 overall, and he grew a lot during the offseason, and he is currently tearing it up for Lethbridge in the WHL, 18 games played, 13 goals, 38 points thus far, he's basically doubled his offensive production, he's more than doubled it, and honestly just playing so well for Lethbridge, and I'm really happy with how Bystet's playing, one, probably one of our biggest risers during the offseason, and he's really proving his worth to Lethbridge, and honestly looking like he could potentially be a great bottom six kind of power forward for us one day. Let's take a look at a goalie, Benjamin Goudreau, 19 years old, low starter potential, 68 overall, he grew five during the offseason, and last season, as I said, I had a lot of complaints with how he played, but this year he has stepped it up tremendously in the nine games he's played, a 297 goals against average, but the 924 save percentage is really what I'm focused on. The defense in front of him obviously isn't playing well, but Goudreau himself is playing terrific with that 924. He has four wins for Sarnia, and overall, this is the improvement that I wanted to really see from uh, Goudreau, so let's hope that he can put this kind of season together uh, for the rest of the year, all season long, and then maybe he will get the call up to the AHL for the start of next year. And the last guy I think I want to look at for this video is 25-year-old Nick Merkley. Low top six potential, 78 overall. He did not change in overall at all during the offseason. 
and he was a decent bottom six role player for us last year. Uh, you know, decent defensively, a little bit of offense, but this year in the AHL, he actually has nine goals and 21 points in 24 games in the AHL. Playing pretty good. He's just really refining his game down there, and I feel like Merkley could be up again at the NHL roster next season. We will see. He will have to really continue this play and actually take a step in the offseason, but I definitely like what I see uh, from Merkley this year, and, you know, I definitely do hope it continues for him. I know I said I would be making a trade in this episode, but honestly, I just haven't found really any offers that I am comfortable with making for the guys who I want to trade away. Um, in the offseason, I was getting much better offers, and I was hoping that I could maybe get a similar offer to that, but it's just not working out, so unfortunately, no trade for this episode, but I still hope you guys did enjoy this episode. I'm really happy to be back recording this, you know, it's just been a crazy kind of month for me, and uh, I'm just, again, really happy to be back here for you guys, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys next time in HLM 22 with our San Jose Sharks GM mode. If you have any feedback, be sure to leave it in the comments down below, and I will see you all in the next one, but for now, bye.